Happy New Year to students of electronics worldwide. And especially I want to welcome and say an special word of appreciation to all my Indian students who have posted comments on the channel under the videos to inspire me to continue making them. A special welcome to Indian students and all students. More educational videos in electronics are coming starting today. Today's video shows you how to quickly and instantly identify the circuit by its configuration. First, we ask ourselves, what is the purpose of the transistor? To change a signal in some way. Most frequency we want to amplify the signal, make it bigger and stronger, but there are purposes other than this that the transistor is used for as well. But all transistor circuits are going to have an input and an output. So it's important that you can identify what is the input, where is it coming from, and what is the output, where is it going to. So there we have a transistor circuit and we've shown an input signal and an output signal. Now two wires are always required because that's why it's called a circuit. A circuit means that we, we go around it and come back to the same place we started. Consider like racing car circuits or other circuits in life. They are essentially a circle, ellipse, or oval. You go around and you come right back. So by having the two wires, we're able to go and come again. The electrons travel around the circuit. So both for the input and the output signal, we are going to require two wires. However, the good news is that one of these wires is just common to both the input and the output. And it's shown there with the ground symbol because typically in electronics the ground symbol reveals the common connection that completes the circuit. So now we can move that outside of the transistor paradigm since it's common and we see that in fact the transistor which has three legs is capable of being used to alter the input signal and produce the output signal. So that this diagram is very important because it shows us how the input signal and the output signal are used with a three-legged transistor. One of the legs of the transistor is going to be common to both the input and output signal. Bear that in mind as we proceed. Now, you may have done both bipolar and field effect transistors, or you may not have learned about the field effect transistors yet, but both of them behave in the same way when considering circuit configurations that we are discussing today. So the symbol there shows that with the emitter, Sorry, with the bipolar transistor, there are three legs called emitter, base, and collector. And with the field effect transistor, there are three legs, gate, source, and drain. Now, although there are internal differences as to how these transistors behave, nevertheless, as far as passing the signals through are concerned, the same rules apply. So you can come back and watch this video again after you've learned about the field effect transistor. Now, if the input goes into the base or gate and the output comes from the collector or drain, the circuit is called a common emitter or a common source depending on which transistor we're dealing with. 
because the leg emitter or source of the transistor is connected to that ground or common of the circuit. The emitter or source is going to be therefore common to both the input and the output signal. And here is the key. So the first time you look at any circuit on a piece of paper, you ask yourself, where is the input going? Which leg of the transistor is the input going into? And which leg of the transistor is the output signal coming from? See how easy it is? So here we have shown the common emitter example. The input signal is going into the base. The output signal is coming from the collector and the emitter is common to both the input and output signal. This is the most common configuration that you will find your transistor in. And if you're dealing with an FET, then the names will change on the legs, but the behavior as far as our input and output is concerned is the same. So your input will go to the gate, the source leg of the transistor will be both in the input and output, and the drain will be for the output signal. So here we have a common base circuit. I give you a minute to see if you, not a minute, but a few seconds to see if you can put the correct labels on the three pins. Okay, if you put the E onto the input, the B onto the ground, and the C onto the output, you would be correct. You probably got the B right because I told you it was common base. The emitter is going to be the input and the collector is going to be the output. You cannot have it the other way around. The collector can never be an input, so just bear that in mind. And if you're dealing with an FET, then you put on the correct pins, and it is called a common gate circuit. Finally, we look at the common collector or common drain. I told you before that the input can never go to the collector, but that does not mean that the collector cannot be common. So when we have the collector as the common leg of the transistor, then we put the input into the base or gate and the output comes from the emitter or source. So finally, we realize that, the in that first of all, there are only three possible configurations because there are only three legs on the transistor. So only one of those three is going to be common. So there are three possible configurations. And uh, as far as the input is concerned, there are only two places it can go. It either goes into the base or it goes into the emitter. And as far as the output signal is concerned, it can only come from two possible places. Either it comes from the collector or it comes from the emitter. So with those rules firmly in view, you can now look at any circuit diagram and instantly recognize the configuration of any particular transistor. In the succeeding lectures, we are going to explain a lot more about why we use one over the other in specific applications. But we want you to subscribe right now. Subscribe right now because the example circuits are coming in the future and you will not want to miss them. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.